amazing woman here to my left is Marissa Peer, world-renowned therapist, six-time best-selling author, and the intellectual genius behind Rapid Transformational Therapy. And before we go into RTT, which has many benefits, one of them is um, eliminating or eradicating, as you say, limiting beliefs. So how do limiting beliefs affect people and they may not even know that these things are affecting them? I knew that would go wrong. I knew that would be a disaster. I knew that wouldn't work out. I was waiting for that to happen. Or they may, they may just say things that I don't understand it. Or it always happens to me. They're often, my mother was like that. She was a wonderful woman. She would always say, it always goes wrong. Everything goes wrong. I know my suitcase will get lost. I know it's going to be a disaster. I know I'm going to hit traffic. And she'd always say, that's going to make me ill. And she was always ill because everything, weather made her ill, food made her ill, people made her ill. And so the tenets of our TT are really taking a look at our thoughts. You know, our thoughts are powerful beyond belief. We all speak to ourselves all the time. We often do it so negatively when it's actually just as easy. It's like, here's a classic one. I get fat just looking at a cake. Well, actually, if you say that a lot, you actually start to produce cortisol, a stress hormone that actually can make you fat. So that can become true. But saying, I have a fantastic metabolic rate. Whatever I eat, I burn off. Energetically, my body just uses it all. You know, I've got now 100 people in the UAE that I trained in our TT, and they're telling me every day the results. Again, one of them is a doctor, and she was saying that she's got this into schools now because they're telling even small children, be careful about the language you use because you're choosing it. And if you're using it, then you're not choosing it. I was definitely never taught the power of my mind growing up. So how can we educate children at a young age about the power of their words? Yeah, so what I did last year is I had these schools all over the world I was teaching, and I had the genie's lamp from Aladdin, and I said, well, because come up, touch the genie and make a wish. And they come up and they go, oh, genie, I really wish not to fail my exams. Oh, genie, I really wish not to be bullied at school. Oh, genie, I really wish not to think all those other kids are prettier than me. And I said, but you see what you're telling the genie, what you don't want. And now the genie said, oh, you don't want to fail your exams? I can give you a headache. I can give you a tummy upset. And now you don't have to go to school because I'm trying to give you what you want. But if you say to the genie, genie, what I want is to be so smart, have a great, and ace those exams. Hey, genie, I want to go to school and make friends because everybody likes me and I like them. So it's just being aware, what are you asking the genie for? We have a genie, here's the genie. Your wish is it's going to go, I don't want to be dumped. If I got ghosted one more time, that would kill me. And my ghost would just never date again then. Mm. Guess what? You can never be ghosted. I don't want to be fired. Well, never push yourself forward. Stay small. And you'll never get fired or promoted. And so that saying, be careful what you ask for, you probably get it, mm. is so true. So how does RTT specifically help people with their limiting beliefs? Well, RTT, it means rapid transformation it's very rapid people come in and they say things like I, I can't leave food I, I'm no good at attention I don't know what to do and people look at me and go but, but that you couldn't have been born no baby said oh my god is that milk fattening <laughs> oh you're looking at me I, I don't really know how to handle attention so we know already that these beliefs are not something you were born with they're something you acquired if you acquired it you can get rid of it so our TT very quickly goes back to how where, when, and why you ever got those limiting beliefs. So when it's found where you've gotten from, it immediately removes them. So it's a bit like being a detective and then a dentist. The detective is finding information, the detectives remove it, and the dentist is removing toxic stuff. So it's based on a three, we do it in three different ways in a one session. Find out what happened to this person, how do they get this fear? Then remove the fear and then install a different belief. Thank you so much. Thank you.
We are coming to you live from the Mind Valley event in Dubai, and the amazing woman here to my left is Marissa Peer, world renowned therapist, six time best selling author, and the intellectual genius behind rapid transformational therapy. And before we go into RTT, which has many benefits, one of them is um, eliminating or eradicating, as you say, limiting beliefs. I want to ask you a little bit about limiting beliefs. Um, this episode specifically is about the power of the mind. So we're looking to educate people in Dubai on what limiting beliefs are and how can they can affect you without you knowing. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so a limiting belief would be I'm going to fail or I'm never going to succeed at that. I'm not very good with people. I don't like confrontation. My dad left when I was two, therefore who's going to love me? And so we have limiting beliefs in our relationships. You're going to leave me when you see me at my worst. I've got to always be perfect. Or um, I'm not going to be able to make it in business. Everyone else is better than me. And then we have other limiting beliefs that are medical, like I get my seasonal hay fever, I always get sick in the winter, I always gain 10 pounds every holiday. And so one, if you understand the mind, what is expected tends to be real. So we have beliefs and we have limiting beliefs. I'm scared, here we come, I'm excited, I'm going to fail, I'm going to succeed, I'm going to forget, I'm going to remember. They're all beliefs, but the negative ones are limiting because we make our beliefs and then our beliefs turn right around and make us. And you have to learn to make your beliefs better. It's like you might say, I'm chronically tired, I'm exhausted, I'm starving. These aren't true. No one is starving in the Western world. You're very rarely chronically tired. You may be tired and dehydrated. So what you have to learn to do is really pay attention to your limiting beliefs and, and start to change them, start to erase them, start to make them better. I can't find love because I've been dumped three times. Well, I learned a lot in those three times, and now I'm going to find love. That love. I'm going to pick different people because you get to choose. You get to choose the words you use. The problem is that your mind has no choice but to act on the words that you're choosing to use, whether they're good or bad. Absolutely. So, how do limiting beliefs affect people, and they may not even know that these things are affecting them? I knew that would go wrong. I knew that would be a disaster. I knew that wouldn't work out. I was waiting for that to happen. Or they may, may just say things that I don't understand it. Or it always happens to me. They're often, my mother was like that. She was a wonderful woman. She would always say, it always goes wrong. Everything goes wrong. I know my suitcase will get lost. I know it's going to be a disaster. I know I'm going to hit traffic. And she'd always say, that's going to make me ill. And she was always ill because everything, weather made her ill, food made her ill, people made her ill. She would have had tension, headaches, a lot. But she was a wonderful teacher because I learned that she was doing that to herself. And I swore that I would never do that. So if, if you haven't got what you want in life, especially if it's love or peace or joy, then you have to really look at, like people say, you know, I want a baby, but it's going to ruin everything. I won't get my promotion. What if it ruins my marriage? What if I get really fat? What if I'm a terrible parent? So there's a limiting belief. You want a baby. Why shouldn't you? It's the most wonderful thing in the world to have a baby. But we have all these, what I call, blocking thoughts. What if I'm an awful mother? What if there's something wrong with a baby? What if my husband doesn't stay because my dad left? What if I get ill? What if the birth is a nightmare? And we don't realize that unexplained infertility means just that. We can't explain it because everything in your body is perfect, but somehow your mind is... And then we have something else called secondary infertility, which means you had a baby, it was perfect, can't have another one because usually then you go, oh my God, another one would kill me. Can you imagine having two? That would be a nightmare. And so the tenets of our TT are really taking a look at our thoughts. You know, our thoughts are powerful. We don't believe we all speak to ourselves all the time. We often do it so negatively when it's actually just as easy. It's like, here's a classic one. I get fat just looking at a cake. Well, actually, if you say that a lot, you actually start to produce cortisol, a stress hormone that actually can make you fat. So that can become true. But saying, I have a fantastic metabolic rate, whatever I eat, I burn off. Energetically, my body just uses it all. I saw that in COVID, oh, I'm going to get COVID. Oh my God, you sat too close to me. There's no line of defense. Yes, there is. It's called your immune system. And by the way, if you think, I've got a great immune system, I'm really strong, really healthy, I'm outdoors, I'm, I'm excellent, I'm eating right, I'm going to stay healthy then funnily enough, that will happen too because we all know people who lie in bed next to their husband's stream and don't get ill. And others say, oh, one sniffle going and I get sick. So we've got to understand that we're choosing this. You know, I've got now 100 people in the UAE that I trained in RTT and they're telling me every day, 
the results they get. One of them is a doctor, and she was saying that she's got this into schools now because they're telling even small children, be careful about the language you use because you're choosing it. And if you're using it, then you're not choosing it. So how can kids learn from this? Because it's really interesting, it's in schools now, yeah. and I was definitely never taught the power of my mind growing up. So how can we educate children at a young age about the power of their words? Yeah, so what I did last year is I had these schools from all over the world I was teaching, and I had the genie's lamp from Aladdin, and I said, well, because come up, touch the genie and make a wish. And they come up and they go, oh, genie, I really wish not to fail my exams. Oh, Jeannie, I really wish not to be bullied at school. Oh, Jeannie, I really wish not to think all those other kids are prettier than me. And I said, but you see what you're telling the Jeannie, what you don't want. And now the Jeannie said, oh, you don't want to fail your exams? I can give you a headache. I can give you a tummy upset. And now you don't have to go to school because I'm trying to give you what you want. But if you say to the genie, genie, what I want is to be so smart, have a great, and ace those exams. Hey genie, I want to go to school and make friends because everybody likes me and I like them. So it's just being aware, what are you asking the genie for? We have a genie, here's the genie. Your wish is it's going, when you go, I don't want to be dumped. If I got ghosted one time, that would kill me, and my ghost would just never date again then. Guess what, you can never be ghosted. I don't want to be fired. Well, never push yourself forward. Stay small. And you'll never get fired or promoted. And so that saying, be careful what you ask for, you probably get it, is so true. Ask for what you want using specific, detailed language, like, I don't want to be dumped because I want to find the love of my life. We're going to be together forever. We're going to fall in love with each other's soul. When I go to work, my boss sees I'm smart, I'm capable, and a really fast thinker, and, and they promote me, and I'm worth it. And if you just want to change one limiting belief, stop saying I'm not enough, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy enough, I'm not smart enough. I'm not attractive and say I'm enough. You might notice I have these bracelets, and we have oh, a movement yes, called I'm gorgeous. Enough. We put this into schools, and all the schools have got it, so you know, it's made the children academically better, but emotionally happier because they don't compare and oh look, they can do that and I can't, I'm not enough. Because you can't be good at everything. If you're brilliant at art, you might not be good at IT. If you're great at math, you're not, not be good at something else. And I think the whole school system, trying to make kids good at everything, is very damaging. Yeah. Yeah. So how does RTT specifically yeah. help people with their limiting beliefs? Well, RTT, it means rapid, transformation it's very rapid people come in and they say things like I, I can't leave food I, I'm no good at attention I don't know what to do people look at me I go but, but that you couldn't have been born no baby said oh my god is that milk fattening <laughs> oh you're looking at me I, I don't really know how to handle attention so we know already that these beliefs are not something you were born with they're something you acquired if you acquired it you can get rid of it so our TT very quickly goes back to how where, when, and why you ever got those limiting beliefs. And when it's found where you got them from, it immediately removes them. So it's a bit like being a detective and then a dentist. The detective is finding information, the detective's removing, and the dentist is removing toxic stuff. So it's based on a three, we do it in three different ways in eight, one session. Find out what happened to this person, how do they get this fear? Then remove the fear and then install a different belief. And it's amazing what comes up. I worked with someone, a man who was 400 pounds, and he remembered being a premature baby. His mother would cry every time he didn't feed, cry and get hysterical, and the father would get upset, and it was very important that this baby had to eat, and they kept saying, he'll die if he doesn't eat. And of course, he picked up, because it wasn't a fleeting, this was repeated every day for weeks and weeks and weeks. And we talk about our formative years. He formed a belief, I, I've got to eat a lot, because first of all, my mother's hysterical, she's only happy when I eat, and secondly, I might die. And of course, the truth is, he would have died because he was eating so much. So you have to kind of negotiate, and I go, look, this was true when you are a baby. It'd be true of any baby that was born weighing two pounds, but you're not a baby. You don't have to be 400 pounds. And then f the final part is a recording that says you love eating less, you love leaving food, you love, um, the, in fact, when I was here last week, I did a talk for 200 people that I've trained, and all my grads were saying one of the things they get the most success with is weight loss and stopping smoking and all different addictions, because the man said, oh yes, I did that then. 
it's almost, it's dealing with what I call unfinished business. I mean, the classic is, my mum wanted a boy and she got a girl, or I was the seventh kid, or I, I, my dad left, he didn't, I wasn't the favorite, therefore I don't matter. But if your life was a big clock, your child was only the first 10 minutes. And the first 10 minutes cannot dictate the rest of the other 50 minutes, which could be amazing. You know, I wasn't the favorite. I'd have loved to have been the favorite. And I think, gosh, if I'd been the favorite, I would never have been so ambitious. I had that, what I call, I'll show you. And I'm so glad I had that. So it's about going back and looking at what happened and then reframing it, you know, because events don't actually affect you. It's the meaning you put onto them and the interpretation you put on them which you're free to change at any time. Incredible. Marissa Peer, thank you so much for your time and for enlightening us on DXB today. And if anybody in here wants to know how to get rid of unlimited beliefs, just go to marissapeer.com. We have so many free audios. We don't ask for a credit card. Go to marissapeer.com. Take whatever you have audios on love blocks, money blocks, health blocks. So they're all free. Take them, give them to everyone. It could change your life. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Hey, this is Marissa Peer, and you are watching DXB Today.